Hey everybody, this is Syrockham again. Welcome back to some more Dungeons and Dragons campaign preparation. So we were uh, actually dropped a couple frames. Okay. Uh, we la we uh, had our session last Saturday, and it turned out pretty well. So we had planned out a number of things, and I'll I'll kind of go through what we did and what I kind of already had planned out, and uh, just how it all interacted, I suppose. But first of all, let's get music going. Chill tunes. All right. Yeah, I also, I'll probably be continuing either the Abyssinia campaign that I converted from CK2 to U4 or uh, the Ibu Empire campaign. I just, um, didn't quite get started on it that quickly today. Hey, Stalin, how's it going? Yeah, session was last. Well, session one was last Saturday. I'll kind of go over how that went in just a minute. So right now we've got. This is just going to be my um, knock something over. This is going to be my thing where I have like a general status of the party. I'm gonna gonna keep. Oh well, congrats, man. That's awesome. Realize how large I had the box there. Nice. Alright, so yeah, this is going to be- this is just... Um... Party... Uh, campaign overview? Campaign progress? Uh, let's go with party... Overview. There we go. So I am, uh, so the party just level one. I would like to have started at level three because that's a bit, getting a bit going. Yeah, should have, should that has to have an index. Uh, that's something that I could also write down too. So the level one, and I gave them an encounter. Just, uh, right now, four players might be five next week or the week after, or maybe not at all. So I gave them one encounter that will give them that gave them 200 experience for a total of 50 each. And um keep, keep track of when they're going to be ready to do stuff. So we're going to go ahead And, uh, let's see. Let's, let's take a look at... Session 1 outline. So, yeah, I'll get into that in a second. They didn't so much fight something as much as they just kind of survived, and I just kind of want to give them a little experience. The faster we get off level one, the better, really. We got a couple new players, a couple not new players, so I kind of wanted to... Uh, the new guys, I would like them to have... 
have the time to sort of get a hold of their class and just the game as a whole. But at the same time, I want to get get through the earlier levels, like the Suha early levels. Because I do have... Because it's just more fun when you at least have a little bit more HP to play with. So I started out by giving the intro, the introduction that I, uh, I won't read through the whole thing, but I'll just bring it up to remind anyone what it is. Here we go. This one, where I went over... Basically, the recent backstory for one of our- one of the characters. The elf paladin, Arel. He kill- he and his villagers killed a... Dragon Wormling to defend themselves from... It, because it could be very, very dangerous. Especially if the longer it sticks around. And... So it, uh, they killed it, and it, this is all narration at this point, but they killed it, and they, and he ran into a figure in this sort of extra planar pocket, and somehow tied to the Feywild. He didn't know that at that point. I mean, it was the one character and then a bunch of, like, commoners, just, uh, like, a dozen of them. A level one paladin and a dozen commoners uh, can probably take on a wormling pretty quickly, I'd say, if they're smart about it. So, they go ahead and... Uh, so, he discovers this man, this... Elf man in this golden armor, and he chokes him out. It's knocked unconscious. Wakes up. His village was destroyed by a dragon. The party now thinks that the man was actually the dragon wormling's parent that had been shape changed, but that's not quite the tale. It's not the not the. It's not the dragon. The dragon is controlled by this elf man, in fact. So that all that happens, sees the dragon uh, flying out to sea where it attacks the boat where two of our char other two characters are. So, Adan and Jean-Luc are below deck of their ship when the roar of a dragon alerts them to danger. So what they do is they run up and they see immediately that, alright, this is, this is an adult dragon. They're way out of their league, so Jean-Luc jumps overboard and starts swimming to shore. And a good, a good number of other people that were on deck were able to get off the ship as well. Like, there were another eight people. I rolled a d8 to see how many, and there were eight. So, they... Uh, and, and then there were, like, four others that were just trying to fight the dragon, but ended up getting destroyed. I didn't even bother rolling for attacks because I just would have gotten crushed anyway. Don't want to fix. I, I just kind of want to get things uh, a bit more hasty. But so uh, Chris's character Adan decided to. Uh, I don't even. I don't know exactly why he kind of stuck around. He knew he couldn't fight the thing. Maybe you wanted to try and... I don't know. Like, you won't... Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't really know exactly what his plan was. But he kind of just waited a little bit longer. The drag... He waited in action to... Jump overboard when the dragon... Attacked him or whatever. And so he just flew... He jumped 
jumped overboard when the dragon made a, a dive at him. And, uh, and he booked it. Uh, and so he just booked it as, as quickly to shore as possible. The dragon destroyed, like, crashed into the boat and just went and just started blowing its venom breath inside and killing everyone. Eventually sick, sinking the boat. And he, f and he flies out from the boat and starts picking off yeah, he starts picking off all the sa all the sailors or pilgrims, whoever they were that were swimming. Eats them one at a time until he's just about to kill Jean Luc, but he doesn't kill Jean Luc because he is a half elf. Because uh, he has been commanded. The party doesn't know this, but he, the dragon has been commanded to destroy. Uh, to kill. Uh, he's he can kill anyone he wants, except. For people with elf blood. So that's elves, half elves included. And so we've got, uh, they eventually all get ashore. And meanwhile, while this is happening, the guys, so there's a Arel and also, um, the other character, a new one that we made like right before for another player that just got, got started. Um, he made a, a ranger, and he's focusing on archery and stuff. Kind of a hunter sort of thing, he hasn't really come up with his background yet. So, they're wondering what the hell they can do, as they're just on shore. They're trying to see if they can get any- can help anyone at all. And these guys are both elves. The... So, and Arel, he wants, he eventually, at one point he gets a bell out to try and gain the attention of anyone that might be trying to get the shores, like, hey, come over here. Don't really know if that would have helped, because, like, what's the difference between going to where they are versus going to anywhere else? So, and eventually he just starts digging a hole in the sand. To try and hide from the dragon, which is, is funny. I appreciate his attempt to do something, but nah. But anyway, I mean, he just dug all in the sand, just very heroic like. And. Oh. So he... So yeah, the party joins up at that point. So they... They join up, they go to the village that was destroyed. And then go up to the cave that they... Uh, where this began, where the dragon wormling was killed. And Arel tells Adan about this. About this story, and like, Adan is Chris, and he just always likes to do people out. Characters always are in that kind of mode. Or if they do something stupid, remotely stupid, sort of stupid, go yell at him for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... Huh. Dungeons and Dragons. Fun times. So they go up to the cave. I was not expecting them go... I, I knew it was a possibility, but I did not think it was going to be something they were going to do. I just kind of got this feeling that they weren't going to, but they ended up actually doing it. So they go up there, they explore around. 
and uh, they go back to that sort of pocket where that where they found the elf and there is a an, what appears to be an elf woman inside the trunk of a tree and they assume dryad even though Chris's character Chris assumes dryad even though his character probably shouldn't even know what a dryad is so he's being kind of meta here And, um, they decide to head out, to go to the next village, to try and... So, I've, they've determined that their mission is to kill this dragon. And that's their quest. At least, as a whole, for the party. Two of them still want to get this artifact, but it's... They, they have made it their mission to kill the dragon. So, cool! I'm glad that they have, re they have resolved to do this thing, so now I know exactly what they are trying to do. So let's go ahead and put party overview. Let's go with objectives. So this will help me keep a better idea of what they're trying to do. Then uh, secondarily, go with primary because it is the goal of at least like it is all of their goal. Like it is the only goal right now of two of them, and it is a secondary goal of the of the others. And so I'm going to put secondary. Uh, find the let's complete their quest to find the holy relic. Alright, so that's their objectives right now. If we get any secondary ones, I'll be I'll be going with that. And so, yeah, that was, uh, that whole thing, that whole opening section, I was, was the whole session, which is probably about four hours? I wasn't expecting it to take that long. I was expecting it to be more like, uh, like, I, I thought it was gonna move through that a bit faster, but it ended up taking a lot more time. Which is good, because I have a lot more planned out. It was a slower start, again, help the new players get more acclimated. And so, now they're going to be heading to the next town, which is about a day's travel away. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up that map. Bring that map up. And here it is. So they started pretty much here. And then they moved down to here. And so now they're right here and they're gonna. Alright, so session two. I should bring. Looking at the map, I should now.
Let's just back to this. So this will be session one outline. Let's hearing up session two outline. And this is I'm gonna keep these pretty vague. This is already like session three outline right here. Let's bring up a new document. And I finally changed the settings. It didn't work. Damn it. Dude. Page setup. Damn it. Damn it, Google Docs. Why would you do this? Oh. Okay. About to quit. But it seems to be okay at the moment. Really hope that's not gonna cut it into... two different parts. I don't think that was 90 seconds. Hold on. Okay, anyway. Uh, why, why? Alright, Google. Google Sheet. What is Google Sheet? Is that Google? Okay, I fix formatting. Over the document. Highlight the text. Mm, no.
Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just really annoyed that I... That it's not letting me do it well enough. Anyway, so this is pretty much going to be session 3 more than likely, as I would guess. This will be... Session... 2... Review. Go ahead and... Alright, that's... Let's go and do... This... Kinda of two different things. I just want to see if it's actually fixed. Why? Doc's help. Grows 25 miles uh, around the forest and 50 miles directly south to the forest. So that would ultimately be slower. All right, so they are right here. But the quickest way out of the forest would be. Probably a straight line east. All right, and I should probably also Okay, let's edit this now. I really should just make it like... Would try be easier.
All right, now this is... Let's just... Hold on. I'm gonna, I, this is this was thirty miles, forty. So ten, twenty, thirty. Oh no! Hold on. It was. It was a uh, fifteen. I said this was thirty. You're gonna oh, it's consistent. This was 30. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 is 30. But 10 is 40. Go and put this right here. Actually, no, hold on. It wouldn't be 30, that'd be like 30. That'd be like 45. That was 30. This was 15. 
I should have made it. I don't know. I mean, the scale is how it is. Probably should have just done the ruler a little bit better. That is not free. That's seven point five. Three point two five. I should at least make it even numbers. And, uh... For the sake of balancing it out visually, I'll put a zero over here. I could actually just type out the scale.
pretty sure if this were to be printed out, if I get a, exactly the scale of the thing, this, like, th this, this should be an inch. Or, no, that's not. I think we can kind of just assume it's in miles. I'm not going to make up an entirely new metric system here. Alright, so anyway, we are here. Let's get out of the forest would be the most expedient. That looks like... Say about this is three and a half miles right here. Three and a quarter mile. Three and a half miles to get out of the forest. So let's go ahead and start putting that down. Let's just... Oh, uh, from the... Cave the party begins at... Is three miles... The actual numeral. Just a bit more expediency. Three miles. Three miles southeast. To get out of the forest. And from there. I'll say that they would go, like, at most expedient about to... Uh, there. From th there to there. It would be fastest to get to uh, get a straight line. There's really no like it would probably be there, about where I'm kind of hovering over there. We'll say that's three and a half miles. Say okay. leave the forest there. This gets and this here.
That will be... Plus another half of three point two five. That's one point six two five plus seven point five. Uh, we'll round it up to about nine miles. Actually not as bad is it really? Yeah, I mean it was just from there around all the way was gonna take longer. Like straight there was only fifteen. This is, yeah, we'll say nine miles. Let's go ahead and get rid of that now. So at a normal pace, that is... Alright, at, um, at a normal pace, it's essentially... I don't remember exactly what it was. It's, no matter what it is, it's always... Like 10 miles an hour? Something like that? Alright, let's, let's say it took... Get from... There to there. We'll say it took about an hour for the occurrence in Iron. Iron. To get you uh to get from there to there. And then the dragon flow and start crushing the boat. We'll say that took an hour. Then get over to here and then about to here, I'll say about two hours. It's only two hours past dawn. So it's still pretty early morning. So then it would take approximately 12 hours to get uh, to Decro most expedient path. So it would be about night. By the time they would get there. Unless they want to go faster.
Well, even at a slower pace. All right, I'm gonna get the book. to memorize the page number that this is on a player's handbook. If I just go back to it constantly. All right, here it is. So at in the forest F it's difficult to rain. Four miles a day at, at three miles an hour. So they're basically at mile and a half. Like a mile and a half to get from here to there. So in order to go three miles, it would take twice as long. taking two hours to get past the trees at a normal pace. Okay. Okay, so... Would take two hours to get out of the forest. At the most direct route that also nearest the, the deck row would take two hours at a normal pace. And uh, an hour and a half. From there, it...
three miles and get out of the forest and mine nine miles and there's death row. There it takes. We already had this song looped around to this one like a second ago, I think. Dream of Green. Hold on, wait, what? Are there two? Well, apparently, I have this on here twice for some reason. But I figured this out then. So let's just do it this way. Be from library. Yeah, I don't need it here twice. There we go. Also, I, I should really... Add... Window capture for iTunes. Why did I not put this on this one yet? Oh, actually remove that. I don't really want it to be stupid big. Go ahead and do it. Here. Okay. Alright, so from there it takes... Hopefully that's the direction it'll go. It takes... Um... Three hours. About two and a half. like a day trip if you were to go from one to the other. Go from 
there and back. Yeah, that's all day. How far would it have how would they have gone? Here. Should I retcon and say that it took them however long? Because it would have been say one hour from there to there. Then from here to here would have been Yeah, yeah, we'll say it's just like two hours and they're there. It'll just cut it. That'll probably be quite quick, but... That's the, kind of the point of that early session. So... I do this. Fear that it's all one thing. This is such a cool book. I got the kind of uh, the box locker edition thing of the core rule books, and it just looks so cool. Great. Alright, this is looking good. Mm. Mm -mm. So now... All right, I should also... Another thing that I want to determine is the day. I've got the calendar here. Well, the calendar that I made for this world, for this area at the very least. And I'm gonna bring that up. Where do I have it? Got a bunch of files. Geography? Jack Farron. For me and calendar. Yeah, here we go. Last time I worked on it was. Was, uh. May 1st of last year. And I already determined that it is late. It's late summer, so it is the third month of summer. I've got it uh, split up into the first day of the year is the winter solstice, and there are three 30-day months in each in each season. And it's not. Alright, so, and there are 10 days in a week, so it's pretty orderly, it's like...
All right, hold on. Let me switch over to that for you. All right, so this is the name. This is what I have here. I started with. Decium is the name for the for the week, and I should probably put that there for clarity. Glodius, oh and this is actually kind of antiquated, considering I've changed up the lore. I've changed the lore a lot since I've done this, actually. The months, I'm thinking I'm keeping the same. It's a little complex, but I think it's kind of cool, the way that I had it set up here, at least. So, um... There are ten days in a week. Or a decium. A season... ...has... ...uh, three months in it. The first month in each season has the same name for the all right um mm. okay <laughs> it's actually kind of complex every season I, sh I should really change this up too but yeah oh man i've completely changed the I really only want to get this so that I know exactly how many days it progressed so that possibly some other things can occur. I want to set things that are completely out of the party's control that they don't even know about happening, occurring on a certain day or something so I can like count towards what it is. So... Uh, three weeks in every like this is a month this is a month this is a month and this is all in one season the, the first month of every season has the same weeks second month of every season has the same names to the weeks and the third month where every season has the same weeks same names to the weeks so it's like you don't say the number the, uh, the number of the month, the number of the day, and then the the year. You would say the name of the day, or maybe the abbreviation for it. The name of the. Hmm. This actually is. This is actually kind of needless. It, it's kind of cool. I kind of like how this is ordered. But again, like, the names are all totally different. Ah. Is, um, gonna bring up bring up my the names of the gods. Gonna bring up my religion chart. For this region. I just map out all the pantheons. Uh, not really. I mean, uh, I've got a- the way that I have the deities work is that there is essentially the main religion of the region that the players are in, and also just 
for the most part the area as the as the continent as a whole is kind of a more uh egalitarian religion that it's not based on culture or a race uh, it's not really just focused on one of those versus like there is one pantheon that's very much based on like a human culture one for elves like very standard elf religions like yeah Coralon. there's another one that's pretty much only for dwarves and then there are some sort of they're like syncretist sorts of religions for humans that are near uh dwarf formerly dwarf dominated areas and things like that so it's like i kind of have not changed up the calendar to take into account all that stuff yet and that's going to be something i'm going to work on eventually i don't really think i want to do that right now i might make that i might do it off stream or i might stream it some other time but right now i just still want to focus on crafting the next session as long as i know the days then As long as I know the, uh, just how many days have passed, it's not a huge problem. Alright, so I mean, it is just the first day. And we know... Session 3, we will... Close you. Um, and I already had this. This is going to be the main thing here. Cobbles in the barn. Decro. I kind of want to just get rid of this for consistency's sake. Saves room. We know the name of the... And I, again, this is for something that's already happened. I don't need this anymore at all. Session 1. Yeah, I've already got the name right up there. Session 1 outline. Go with the Decro. All right, the should also make it so that there could be an encounter. That would be good. They decide to go quickly. All right. Simple encounter. Gonna open up. What would be a good forest encounter? I'm gonna look up some Monsters by challenge rating, monsters by type. No, that's not quite what I want.
Okay, I don't know. A good... Maybe, no, hold on, was it Volos that has the monster manual? Up in it? Oh. I know this was the first supplement, monster wise. By environment. Goggle. I don't think they... Oh. Have it actually by environ. I feel like for this reprint they really should have done that. is a 1 8 challenge dude like uh, how many would be an interesting encounter or potentially death dangerous encounter I really do like cobalt fight club makes it deadly encounter. Yeah, let's go with six bandits. We're gonna make a likelihood of this happening. Alright, party goes. Put it. While in the forest, there is a while traveling. There's a chance the party could be costed by bandits. Again, periods that I don't need to consider that, that, that don't matter at all. But I want to put here because now I'm making full sentence. Traveling, there is a chance the party could be accosted by bandits. Alright. Actually, make it the likelihood of this happening. 
varies based on the party's speed and Byron. Okay. So I will roll a d20 as they travel. How, uh, what, should, what would be a good likelihood? Like, the most likely should definitely be... It should be 50-50 if they're going fast in... The forest. Alright. Oh. Forest. Forest. Normal pace. Make it a one quarter chance. Mm, should I make it 50 50 at fast? Let's just make it a little bit lower. Make it a little bit lower. I mean, I'm going to be making two rolls here, so. And uh, this will probably be a roll for like all of their travel. Once it happens once, though, I'll either come up with a different encounter or there just won't be any more. Or it's normal pace. All right, and this is also without stealth. I'll change the numbers up. I doubt they're gonna try and be stealthy. My forest normal pace will be... We'll say... I know that's forest. Fast pace will make that 17 or 20. Seventeen through twenty on a D twenty. Of course. Normal pace can be 19 through 20. Hmm. Maybe this is a little bit too high. Maybe I should make it percentile. Then, uh. Planes. Normal pace. Also be 20. Adjust a straight 20. Planes. Fast pace, uh, 19 through 20. So let's go ahead and just make this an 18 and this a 16. A little bit less than a 1 4 for the forest fast pace. They might. It's just to represent whether they're, whether they are, in the position that they're at. Like, if they go ahead, that this is just whether it will happen at all. If the this determines whether they will be found at all, I 
It basically... This is basically the role of whether the bandits are there. And because they are not being sneaky, and the, the bandits are looking for things, people they could cost for money. for money they are actively looking so they won't need to be they, this is basically their perception check and likelihood that they can find anything this is just the whether the encounter will occur at all and uh, how the encounter goes down should also be determined by by the party's perception if they decide to go slowly and sneakily, I will make them make a, a stealth check against the bandits' perception only if I roll for them to actually occur. Like, if they are going sneakily, they can make their stealth check, and then I will roll whether the bandits will occur at all. Like, if they are going... They are, mm. I don't know, it's probably a less complex way to do this. There aren't many bandits out here. They don't have, and there's a lot of land that they have to cover. to the next area as well.
We wrote it down here somewhere, right? I know I wrote it down somewhere. Get rid of this one. Why did I write it down? I mean, it was... Pretty straight line. Death row to Eifeld. I Eilfed. 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 I remember doing a whole bunch of math. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Good session. My session three outline. All right, seven and a half miles. Right. Two hours in a normal pace. No problem. Seven point five miles south. Last to I have fed. And uh, only takes about two hours to get there, but it's gonna pretty much, it may, I don't know, what should be happening? Six bandits. This will be our base line encounter. So it will take them. Rob, oh, I'd assume they'd only go at a medium pace. Nothing really strange happening. Direct route that is also nearest deck row. So it'll take them five hours, really. Yeah, that's not too bad. I 
Alright, so it'll really only be about noon by the time they get there. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it'll really only be about noonish. say What was I saying? I'm gonna say something. Once they get there, that's when the kobolds are gonna do all their thing. I guess I feel like I'm trying to flesh out more than I have to. For this part, I've really got it mostly down. Flapping the bridge of my nose. Make the noise. I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know what.
All right. Uh, right. I think I was going to say. All right. If the party may make... The party is... Also, I, I need to find out look at like passive perceptions and stuff. Like what is the intended time to use passive versus the rolling for it? Because like if your passive perception is really high, what's the point of ever rolling it? Is it if nothing I don't know. Look up passive. Your ability check. Passive checks. Passive check is a special kind of ability check that doesn't involve any die rolls. Such a check can represent the average result for a task done repeatedly, such as searching for secret doors and over and over again, or can be used when the DM wants to secretly determine whether the character eats something without rolling dice, such as noticing a hidden monster. Here's how to determine. Okay. If the character has advantage on check at 5. Passive that much. I'd say if it's to find someone. Or if it's just out in the open, if it is not actively doing anything, what you're perceiving here, uh, then I think passive is good, because if they're being passive, your perception can also be passive. Say if these bandits are trying to hide, if they're trying to be stealthy, Yeah, I think if they are actively trying to be stealthy... If they're actively trying to be stealthy, then they should... Then there should be checks. Like, if they're trying to find something... If they're trying to find something, if they're trying to perceive something... Then... It would likely be more of a... Then that would be... An active check. A passive check would be like, Alright, there is something here, and then your ability... You're, you're not looking for it, but because you're a passive... Because you are a... Person of... Good... Perception... You will notice something that is in plain sight, but is not something that you are looking for. Alright, that's probably how I'm going to do path decks. Alright. If 
the um, party if the bandit counter is engaged then the party makes a exception check against the And it's stealth. If they party oops. The parry, if the party succeeds, then they notice the bandits before they get into range. If they fail by, uh, Less than five, less than Jake. They fail by less than five, then they are let's say. Like, all right, if they fail, then they'll just be caught by surprise. If they fail badly, they'll be flanked. If they fail miserably, then they will be completely surrounded. Because like, being completely surrounded, like with crossbows pointed at them, like re actions ready to fire if they don't do it, like even if this, like that would be a really, really bad situation. So I don't really think I want to do that as my sort of default. There's no way they could fail this check by, by like, 15 points. Pretty sure that would actually be impossible. Oh! I could roll really good and they all roll really bad. They're all, they're all fresh. These bandits are not strong. Alright, let's look up these bandits. Yeah, I mean, they just roll a d6 plus 1 for damage for the scimitar. 1d8. Piercing. And it's got a plus 3 to hit. And they're all pretty bulky characters, too. It's just, it essentially be a coin flip. But even then, with 6 bandits... That adds up. They've only got 11 hit points and 12 AC. So, feasibly, they could take out one bandit in one turn. They've got a healer, so... Alright, if they fail by less than 5, then they are... ...surprised. 
by bandits on one side. It's actually this. If they fail by less than Ten, but more than five, then they are prized and flanked. If they fail by more than ten, all right, that seems good. Like less than five, so one through four, five through nine, ten plus. That seems more feasible. So, yeah. Seems cool. This will likely happen. Like, if it, eventually. Eventually this account encounter will fire. That could also be one where they... Who out looking for him. Like, if they got these six bandits, then hopefully by... Hopefully there'll be a higher level and they could actually fight the bandit leader. Alright, let's go ahead and... Bandit Captain. Four players at level two. That's a medium encounter. Just one. Alright, maybe I, I won't have them do that until, like... I mean, Bandit Captain and... How strong is Bandit Captain? Maybe by level three. Yeah. Let's take a look at this bandit captain. And level three, that's just so much better than even level two. He's got like parry and stuff. Got multi attack. That I keep that comes into account. Darren Dan. I'm actually gonna copy this as well. I'm gonna open up. I'll just put this in the in the go. Drop sprites. I do like that. But here. I should put this somewhere else, actually.
There we go. Alright, session two. Alright, I mean, so it's really only about noon by the time they get there. I'm actually gonna... A little bit of a thing where I will determine what happens with the staters of uh, Eilfed, depending on when they get there. If they get there the day before, and they will almost certainly spend the night. This is probably something that could happen twice. I mean, we could get this one and the other one more than likely. Maybe not as likely if we get the second one going. If, if we get the bandit counter encounter and then the other dudes. But then again, they might spend a lot of time talking with the lady merchant. Uh, with the, uh, yeah. Yeah? So... Say... What happened... Day one? I mean, does it make a difference if they show up beforehand? Let's say if it takes them... They stay too long in the other place. I'll just say... If the party yeah I'll say if it if it takes them to the third day to get there he he doesn't get there get the to the Fed stop this before the third day of the uh, of the day after the dragon didn't then it is too late and the villagers have already been killed. And the likelihood at that point is that they will go on a mission to go find them. That would be cool. That's cool, yeah. Like, if they get there the day before... I don't want it to be like they just move past it, because nothing seems like it's... Oh. As long as they're warned. Like, alright, these guys... These guys have something up about them. Alright, so if they... If it... They get their first day. I mean, it's not gonna make a difference. 
The only difference is that they're more likely to leave, and that essentially just means the encounter is never going to happen. They could hear about it later, and be like, oh man, we should go back and fix that, and they could all feel bad about that they didn't do it. But would the... I don't think the guys would wait that long. They would if, if the party gets there on the first day, the first evening. Would the maybe if they wake up and they hear all the noise? they come yeah we'll say on the second day is when the fifth day of these will happen by dawn of the next day the villagers have been killed all right Second day since the party set out. Party occurs on second day on the day after. If they get hung up, I may actually kind of push it back so they don't just completely miss this. I want them to at least hear about this happening and then ideally go after doing, like, fixing this. Be I just feel like it's kind of cool that they would fight haters. If they do miss it, they could follow the satyrs, or follow their tracks or something, and actually get led to Solas. That's good, I like that, because they're probably not going to do it otherwise. And he could just go away, and I'd be fine with that as well. I'd kind of rather he did, because, I mean, the more they get near him, the more they piss him off. Second day after the party, the uh, adventures set out. Okay. I think this is good. And that's a good thing to put up. I am gonna need to mess with the calendar.
I'm just looking at my chart here. I don't really want to show it because there's a lot of stuff that really needs to be changed. Well, a couple things that I just kind of don't want to... Something that I will change later eventually. I think I'm gonna be keeping the name either the, the months will be the same or the names of the days. A lot of reorganization I might be doing here. point that I switch over to this as well, like, uh, that was an accident. I've been on that for a little bit, actually. My bad. So I changed up that, I added that thing. Party occurs on the day after the adventure is set out. From... Iron. Iron. Because the title's up there, I don't need it up here. Okay. I don't need to get into too much details about the kobolds. Would be kind of nice if I, I'd prefer if they fight them. They feel that'd be fun. I might make something bad happen if they kill them. But I feel like they're gonna be diplomatic about it. In fact, that because you, I should come up with a couple things like.
All right. I kind of want to just use that that cobalt inventor guy. Scared away, persuaded, or elite. People are just killed. Yeah, I'll make it. It'll probably be simple. They're just a bunch of kobolds. The intimidated to leave with. Yeah, come. How many? Checks. No, I mean, I feel like I should just play this one by ear, actually. Depending on how good their checks are. Depending on what they say. Like, if they say something like... Yeah, I mean, they're just kobolds. In inventor, though, is actually... How intelligent is he? Probably a little bit more so. Uh, this is... Uh, Vanathar is mostly player stuff, right? I'm thinking of, thinking of the other one. It was, was it Volo? I think it was Volo, actually. Lower level stuff in Volo, generally. Volos versus the higher level stuff in the other one. Inventor, intelligence eight. Yeah, not good. Still dumb. Yeah, I feel like I can play this one by ear.
So, I mean, I've got enough for what will almost certainly be the next one, maybe two sessions. Anything else? I want to work with the staters here. Alright, I should also put... ...in some bow. some dice. Didn't know that it was on there. Alright. Let's see. Just put in like all their stats. Or at least all the ones that I really need. This is just stuff so that I remember. Just so I can see it a bit more. No, I, yeah, party overview. Strength plus. Two. Plus two. Dolphins fifteen. Also plus two. Wisdom is stupid high. 
Yeah, we got some good rolls here. These guys. This is them 19. A plus 4. Let me make it in the columns. What do I really need? No, that's kind of more the question. AC, initiative, speed, max hit points, that might all be good. Languages also would probably be good. Two. Common. Elvish. Orvish. Plus. Gil. I think you also said draconic. Then, like, two more that we haven't determined. Not a huge deal. Actually, what armor class? Teen initiative zero speed thirty. All right, that seems good. Oh, 
Yeah, it's like the difference between hit points between Fighter and the Cleric at this point is only two. Seventeen, though, real good. Mm, plus four. Sure. Speed. Go and again. Next, Charity. Constitution. Intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Charisma. Dexterity. Going for kind of more of the dodgy tank. Especially with strength of 11. Because right, I think he wants to multi class. What's up, Hobgob? Especially because he wants to multi class as a. Yeah, barbarian. Right, that's what we got there. And languages. Common and Kanasi, which is a different language. That's kind of more of a regional thing. Probably not going to come into play here, though. Although I could make it come into play. Thinking about that. Gotta think about that. Then I've got... One more that I have here. The other one took him home with him. Here is she. Character sheet home. So right now, in case you were wondering, I am just putting in stats so that I have a little bit more on hand, on hand what exactly the players can do. So this guy is... Sorry. Terrible Halo. 
Bay. Elf Ranger. Hit points. He did not put them in. <laughs> Alright, but anyway, it's uh, it's con is one and it's a D eight. So we should have this is why I put stuff in. Now this is he he's new. The new player. Yeah, that should be nine HP. Armor class. 16, he's real dodgy. And he's, he is stupid fast, too. Plus 5 to initiative. Speed. 35 feet. Wisdom. Nope. That's, uh... Nope. No magical seventh stat. And that is a nine. He's not a very talkative guy. Attack that's uh, nine. A negative. Negative zero. Negative one. Fourteen and wisdom plus two. Eleven intelligence. That's a plus one. Thirteen. Parity modifier is plus five because he's got a whopping twenty. He rolled an 18, rolled three sixes, and he's an elf, so he had the uh, plus two from the racial. Plus one there. Then languages. Kuman. Elvish and Sylvan. Alright, so this is the basic setup. How much experience they have? On oh, a uh, passive. Put in their passive. That's probably the most important thing, actually. Uh, 
That's the perception, it's just the modifier plus 10. So that's 12. No, uh, for him. No, it's that's a 14. Actually, put that. Right after the stats. So I'm gonna putting it here. Alright, so yours is just then. This is 12. Cool. I don't really think I need to know much else. Objectives, got all the stats. Actually, hold on, let me see. The format this a little bit differently. Make it a little bit better. this in the header. I think there's a header. Oh, and I got rid of the other thing. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, 
Alright. Got a... Objectives. Primary. Beat. Dragon. That hacked them. Secondary. Come. Uh. Find the holy relic. Yeah, that's fine. All right, what else for a party over here? What else would you need for a party over here? You could also put in what they're trained in. Do I really need to know that? Not really. I'm gonna probably work on the calendar off screen or maybe later later on my own maybe later in this and um, definitely a future one future stream I'm gonna need to I'm gonna populate another town or two like, that's probably what I should have been doing this whole time is populating Eilfeld 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 whatever Thank you guys very much for joining me. Rock over London, rock on Chicago. I'm Sarah Rock Omega, and have a nice day. Later.